had a fantastic run in basketball. My body's uh, not up for the commitment of a uh, full season in the NBL any longer. I wasn't bouncing back from the knocks like I was even three years ago. I've been a part of some great times in the league and you know, my time has come. An emotional time for any player to say they're going to retire and what's the right time, what's the wrong time and, and this is his time. Willie Farley going left, step back, Willie Farley down! We've only lost two games at home, so it's a, it's a good start for us to, into the final series. We go into Adelaide fearing nothing. And what a circus trick from Martin Catalini. Over the last month and a half, this team has played as well as any team in the competition. I would not expect Adelaide to be anything but tough as hell. We have to win to go on, but now it's well, you know, we don't want reason to retire just yet. Yes, after 17 seasons and four championship, is this the end of the road for Paul Rees or will it be season over for the Cairns Taipans as we welcome you to Adelaide for Fox Sports live and exclusive coverage of the AXA final series of the Phillips Championship. Hello everyone, I'm John Casey. Great to have you with us for our fourth consecutive night of sudden death elimination in the NBL. The Cairns Taipans two nights ago knocked over the Hunter Pirates. They come here to Adelaide full of confidence and the big news for the Taipans fans is that star centre Chris Burgess will suit up and will start the match after injuring his ankle in that win over the Hunter Pirates. NBL Hall of Famer Steve Carfino is with me as usual. We saw the Perth Wildcats keep their momentum going and knock over Wollongong last night, Steve. Will they upset Adelaide here, the Cairns Taipans? Well, I think they can draw from that. The, the Wollongong Hawks were outplayed by the Perth Wildcats last night, but the glaring thing was that the Perth Wildcats came into the gym despite losing three games in a regular season to them and being swept. They came in with an air of confidence because they were playing better than the Wollongong Hawks, and that's probably what the Cairns Taipans can do because their run into to this game has been better than Adelaide's. Well, three of the four semi-final spots have been decided, and in one half of the draw, we have the Melbourne Tigers taking on the number seven seeds, the Perth Wildcats. They were too good for Brisbane, and then they beat Wollongong by 20 last night in a very impressive display. And in the other half of the draw, Cairns' eight-point win over the Hunter Pirates has booked them an appointment tonight with the Adelaide 36ers, and the winner here tonight will face the Sydney Kings in that semi-final series. The 36ers' recent form hasn't been a lot to write home about but their performance against the Cairns Taipans, well it was done without the services of Brett Maher and Dusty Reichardt. Their last performance against Brisbane, a 43 point crashing, their biggest loss of the season and to complete the three losses in a row, all against the Queensland's team, it is against Townsville. Adelaide's last win, round 21 here against the Hunter Pirates, it was a good victory by 20 points and before that they defeated Perth on the road by 16 as well. But let's remember when Adelaide won the championship in 1998, they lost their last three matches in the regular season. I don't think they're worried about those numbers, Steve. Well, they're kind of famous for limping into the playoffs and still doing well. When they beat West Sydney in 2001, they did a great job of just turning it on in the playoffs. So nobody is going to just rule them out, even though they haven't played well before they go into the playoffs, at least not me. Well, as we've said, the Cairns Taipans arrived here with a full head of steam. Their record has been very impressive. They've won four of their last five, including an eight-point victory over the Hunter Pirates. They knocked over the reigning champs, Sydney, who are undermanned by 23, defeated Townsville by 17, spanked Adelaide for their biggest win of the season by 24, and their only loss there could well have been a victory as well. They led Melbourne for a large majority of that game before losing in overtime, but it was their performance on Thursday night at home against the Hunter Pirates that will have them full of confidence. It was a rough and tough display. Aaron Grabo did an excellent defensive job. He is an X-factor. Kane Oakley finished with five stitches and a cut above his left eye. He played above himself in that match as well. And it was the former Adelaide two-time championship winner, Darnell Mee and Martin Catalini that would have sent a shiver through the 36ers fans because those two men really did the job for the Cairns Taipans. And here in a venue they know so well, they are ready to go. They sure are. I mean, they have a wealth of experience and championship experience as well as playoff experience. So these guys are ready for a game like this. But I like how they play deep when they knuckled down and needed stops against the Hunter team in the crunch of the game, they were able to get it done. Well, Chris Burgess had his best game against the Adelaide 36ers leading into the playoffs. His form has been great until he injured himself there on Thursday night, but he is here and he is ready to go. It's done, it's done pretty well. I've had uh, constant treatment. Uh, I took a later flight and uh, physio and trainer went with me. 
um, constant icing throughout the plane, and then also when we were in Sydney, constant um, some more icing, some ultrasounds, some stims. So I've been keeping it up, doing all the things to try to get ready for today. So it's done all right. It's got better each day. Um, unfortunately, we had the 48-hour turnaround, but I'm going to do my best tonight and see how it goes. Well, Chris Burgess had a game-high 27 points, a game-high 15 rebounds the last time he played Adelaide. They could not contain him. Will they contain him tonight, Steve? Well, I think it's very important that he knocks his first couple shots down because that adrenaline will be pumping. It's amazing how you don't feel the injuries when you're playing well. I don't think he'll be able to go to the offensive glass with the intensity that he did in the, in the previous game in their win. So against the against Hunter Pirates. So if he's not able to do that, he, I don't think he'll be as effective, but he will be very effective in this game if he's able to play minutes. Well, the Adelaide 36ers have only lost two games at home all season, and they've won eight of ten matches against the Cairns Taipans. And Steve will tell us about this great lineup. Well, this is a lineup that can, that can get hot. They've got role players in the center position in David Cooper, and look for him to have a good defensive game, too. If they can send him to him and block some shots, that'll be a bonus. They need to get Dusty Rykar going. I think the magic number for him is 20 points and 10 rebounds tonight. Jacob Holmes needs to take advantage of when they lay off and go to other guys and he has a smaller man on him. Back him in. Shoot that little fall away. Love so much. In the backcourt with it. Farley and Brett Moore. And they are one of the best backcourts to ever play in the National Basketball League. They need to come up big. Those big three scores for them need to get the goods tonight. Coming off the bench for them and also they need a solid contribution from the bench. Brad Hill, if he can come in here and create the energy, and Mark Nash, if he can play with some confidence, knock down the open three, grab some offensive rebounds, then you probably have to go all the way down to Oscar Foreman, who, of course, is one of the best three-point shooters in the competition, and he's long and athletic as well, and Paul Rees will get some minutes tonight, too, especially if Chris Burgess is being effective in tonight's game. Adelaide have six championship winners on their roster. Cairns has five, and it's a very formidable lineup as well. Gary Budnikoff, who led the league in three-point shooting, this year a former championship winner with Sydney Chris Burgess second in the league in rebounding and block shots and Martin Catalani on Thursday night led his team in scoring rebounding and assist he has won championships here with Adelaide in the past after playing in Spain last year and in the backcourt plenty of experience here as well Darnell Me, two-time championship winner here in Adelaide where he spent four years and Aaron Grabeau one of the best defensive players in the country who did a great job containing the Hunter Pirates live wire on Thursday night. Coming off the bench, good experience there for them as well. Kane Oakley, who the former runner-up in Rookie of the Year voting in 2002. Nathan Crosswell, Anthony Stewart, delivering 13 points per game and a championship winner in Perth. Melvin Thomas, the Wollongong championship winner in his 15th season. And Matt Smith, the backup centre for Chris Burgess, who may see more minutes than the coach Alan Black would like tonight if Burgess cannot compete. Our referees for this one, reigning referee of the year, Scott Butler, will do the honours with him, Tom Mills and Damian Tice, and we are underway at the distinctive Holmes Dome in Adelaide. A semi-final spot up for grabs, and the loser, it is season over. Cooper, the former Cairns player, shoots the first two for Adelaide, and the fans erupt. And they're testing Chris Burgess early, seeing his mobility on the defensive end of the floor. Coop can hit some shots and draw him out. That's going to be tough for Burgess, especially in the early stages. Daniel Mead guarded by Willie Farley, now Grabeau working against Barr, Budnikov. Down low to Catalini against Riker. He walks into the paint, whistle provided by Damian Tice. Three throws to come for the Cairns Taipans. That is what they are best at. They lead the league in getting to the free throw line. Because they're hard to handle. And Catalini, of course, is, as we've said all year long, a very tough matchup. Plays a lot of fours, so he's out quick in the fours. And then if he goes down to the three, they play a bigger lineup. It takes them down low on the block. Also, they get to the line a lot because me penetrates Nathan Crosswell, who gets more free throws than anybody on that team. He is tough to keep out of the lane. Brett Mark. Picking up the dribble going to Jacob Holmes is hoping to be named in the Australian team tomorrow for the Commonwealth Games. Now Rijkaard pulling the trigger on a three. Off the back of the rim, Catalini scurries after the rebound and brings the ball to the floor as well. Burgess 
Down low against Cooper. Picking outside to Gravo, who fires the triple and knocks it down as well. The Taipans take the lead for the first time in the game. I disagree with Chris Burgess. Even if he can't give them 100%, he forces a double team, which gives them offensive opportunities. Brett Mark needs help. Jacob Holmes provides it. Goes back to the captain. Shot clock down to single numbers as Ma works baseline. Tentative attempt. Couldn't finish it. Rijkaard, the offensive rebound. May have stepped out of court. That is the call from Damian Tice. I think Adelaide should play Coop and Burgess just single coverage to test that angle. Maybe he doesn't demand a double team not being 100%. who shares it with Darnell Lee. Shot clock rolls the single numbers now for the Taipans. Budnikov from long range. He knocks down the triple. The Taipans have scored eight without reply. Got to show a hand a little bit better than that on Budnikov, but his ability to put it on the floor and get to the rim makes you play him more honest. Well, Budnikov was none of seven from long range on Thursday night as Dusty Reinka eases the situation for Adelaide. Terrific start to the match, a little over two minutes played as Catalini shake and bake on Dusty Reichardt and more free throws to come for the Catman. Be tough cover. Man, look at all that room. And that spacing by Cairns, very good, allowing Martin Catalini room to operate on a mismatch. Now, Dusty Reichardt has a mismatch on the other end because when he takes him down on the block, he can work his magic over Catalini, who's undersized in that low post position. Thai fans were 22 of 34 from the free throw line on Thursday night. They are the best free throw shooting team in the league. They have a five point buffer here. We've played two and a half minutes of the opening term from the distinctive Holmes Dome. Ma getting some treatment from Darnell Mee. Now Jacob Holmes. Seven. Penetrates against Grubo, couldn't finish it. Cooper got a piece of the action and still working hard. Reaching in now, he's been called for the foul. That's a good hustle by Coop. Unfortunate for him that the ball just kept popping to Cairns. Now, Grubo doesn't seem to know that he's behind him. Not great court awareness by Aaron Grubo. 13 foul on Adelaide, second on Cooper. Taipan's yet to commit a foul as Catalini fires unsuccessfully and Brent Maher has the rebound. Pulls up in transition. Rijkaard got away with a shove on Garen Grabeau that carries on whistle and cleans up with the extra points. Well, Cairns need to do a better job of locating Brett Maher in transition. He won't miss many of those threes in transition if he's allowed to have a rhythm like that. Catalini top of the key, can't finish it. Rijkaard grabs the rebound and a foul called on David Cooper as he harasses the big man Chris Burgess. That's 14 fouls on Adelaide with play to tick over three minutes. Boy, Chris Burgess is getting a lot of attention from the Adelaide 36ers. Obviously Adelaide feel, even though he's got a bad wheel, that he is the key to this game. Mark Nash about to check in. Cooper with three quick fouls. And now Burgess has Reichardt to contend with. Pushes his way past Brent Maher. And Burgess comes up with the goods. His first points in the game. Mark to Farley. Hasn't seen a lot of the ball so far. Cooper to Holmes. Working on the shorter Budnikov. Pulls up for the jumper. Jacob Holmes opens his scoring again. But they have to watch out when he's backing his player down like that, that they still need movement away from the ball. Because when things get stagnant from standing around, Aaron Grubo for three, bingo. Aaron Grubo comes up with the goods. Second three of the match, and the Taipans three of four from deep. Adelaide none of one so far from long range. Marching back to six. As Farley takes on Grubo, baseline elevating, thought he was fouled, and that is the call from Damian Tice. Late whistle provided. Scott Butler was on top of the situation, didn't see a foul, but Damian Tice did. I'm not sure why the whistle was so late. Obviously, Scott Butler didn't think that that was a foul. 
I was thinking maybe he got some of his elbow or something because the shot came up pretty short. He did a good job of laying off. And Willie Farley, no doubt, is a tough cover. And a very good free throw shooter as well. Top 10 in the league at 84%. But it's Cairns by four. A little over four minutes played, term number one. Nash has the job down on Burgess. That's going to test his defensive capabilities. He can guard anyone from one to five. And Catalini with a foot violation has popped it up to Adelaide. Get another look at it. Yeah, he did use that foot to his advantage. Almost got away with it, too. Five fans have done a good job of taking the crowd out of the equation so far. This is Nash. Handing off to Brett Ma, the captain elevates against Burgess, couldn't finish it. Jacob Holmes got into the back of Bravo. That goes up whistle. And the tight fans come back up the floor with some purpose. Catalini to Burgess, guarded by the undersized Mark Nash. Burgess takes him on, and Nash with the active hands knocks the ball away. Burgess goes back for seconds, it's fouled, couldn't finish it off. And the foul will be called on Mark Nash. That is the fifth team foul on Adelaide, and they have all come after just five minutes and five seconds. What I'm seeing in this game is that Cans have come in here, and they are fearless. Very similar to Perth last night, even though Wollongong jumped out and played well early. Perth was able to just keep their composure and play with a tremendous amount of confidence. And it's looking like that here early in the early stages. Cans don't look rattled at all by anything that Adelaide is throwing at them. Set on the post up. He's going to double it aggressively, do it quickly, and rotate out of that. So we got a double, but it's it's coming and it's slow. Then he's just able to pass it back out. Even after that, there's still no rotation. All right. The ball goes down to the post. We're an aggressive double on that, and we're aggressive in the way we rotate, all right? We want them to swing the ball. We'll pick them up on that on the penetration, as opposed to just getting it in the post and then just picking guys for easy shots. It goes into the post. We're going straight away on the double. Other guys are getting ready to rotate. Go, here we go. What a tremendous record Phil Smythe has with the 36ers. His ninth year. They've made the finals every time. Looking for their sixth semi-final appearance and three championships already. That's amazing. Guys just love to play for him. How many times have we seen players who look average playing for other teams come in here and be world beaters and then also with players exiting going to other clubs and then all of a sudden going back to looking somewhat average. <laughs> Well, Burgess has been impressive so far, creating all sorts of problems for Adelaide. He has four points, only Grabeau with six on two of two long-range shooting has more in the game. And it's a six-point edge for the Taipans at the moment. Farley guarded by Darnell Mee. Shot clock now to single figures as Nash skips away from Burgess. Decided to shoot from range and couldn't finish it off. And the Taipans with another opportunity. Burgess again posting up Nash. Darnell Me heads in that direction, then kicks to Catalini. Now they find Burgess spinning baseline. Got it off quickly, but unsuccessfully. Grabeau, the offensive rebound to keep it alive. Budnikov fires and knocks down the triple. Took a little rhythm dribble. Got himself in rhythm and knocked it down. Can shooting with a tremendous amount of confidence from the perimeter. Nash. To Jacob Holmes, guarded by Budnikov. Reichardt, wheeling to the hoop, off the window, couldn't finish it from close range. Nash does. Comes up with his first points in the game. Excellent cut by Dusty Reichardt on a curl cut. Got the basketball to him at the perfect time. Just rolled out. The thing about Cans in their defense is with Darnell me being their point guard and so tall, Catalini, all those guys are relatively the same size, so they do a lot of switching. Over six minutes play, term number one. Burgess sits down, replaced by Melvin Thomas as Catalini helps himself to another two. He has five in the game. It's a nine point lead for the Cairns Taipans. We're giving Adelaide plenty to think about at the moment. Brett Mark unhappy with the no call there as Riker gets Daniel Me going the wrong way. And their feet coming into contact there. Riker tripping and he will go to the free throw line. Foul is called on Melvin Thomas. Well, 
Melvin Thomas um, was just standing close. No foul on him. The foul actually occurred on Darnell Me with just colliding with the feet. I still like the call of, you know, if they bump feet, just give it to the other team out of bounds. Here's Reichardt working on Catalini. Forced him into a tough shot, but he was good enough to make it tumble. Reichardt now with six in the game, joins Grabo and Budnikov as the high scorer. Healthy seven-point lead for the Taipans, though. Catalini ready to go again. This time couldn't finish, and Nash grabs the rebound. Hands off to Reichardt. Foreman up the floor quickly gets it next. And now back to Reichardt, operating at the elbow. Now Brett Maher, getting plenty of attention. Good hands from Anthony Stewart, knocking it away from Reichardt and the Taipans with another opportunity. And Stewart, who started the play, couldn't get the three to tumble. Catalini, against multiple opposition, retreats to Melvin Thomas. And now they go back to Catalini. Budnikov from deep again. A little deep with the shot and forming the rebound. Nash working hard up the floor, and Brett Maher works to the top of the key, and he knocks down his first points, having not played for two weeks. See, Melvin Thomas got to anticipate that. His man set the screen. Brett Maher just caught that thing in rhythm and knocked it down. Budnikov to Melvin Thomas, guarded by Nash. Melvin fires unsuccessfully. Foreman grabs the rebound. And Brett Maher, Adelaide have grabbed the momentum here. They've scored the last four. Brett Maher skipped past Catalini, who's forced a foul. The free throws to come for Brett Maher. And he is the best from the stripe in the country at 87%. Dusty Reichardt this time sets the screen, and that's what Adelaide are good at. Watch Dusty Reichardt. He had actually Mark Nash and Dusty Reichardt ready to set a screen for Brett Maher, get their captain some open looks in transition that's very difficult to defend in the open court because your defense isn't set yet timeout called 355 left on the clock here in term number one adelaide have scored the last four to close to within five free throws to come for brent Maher, the skipper we spoke to paul reese before the game and we asked them we asked him the key to beating the cans taipans oh they've got some great players there's no question you know at the start of the year you looked at their lineup what they were going to put on the floor and you thought oh, i think cans could be one of the movers this year and uh they they proved to be so you know they got darnell me out the front you know um Budnikoff is you know the best shooter in the land martin catalini gee what an x-factor he is and you know chris burgess a man mountain so i don't know <laughs> but uh hopefully our our team defense and our running game will run them off their feet tonight <laughs> As, as he started to go on with that explanation, I was like, has he left anybody out? He started talking about pretty much the entire team. Well, he knows a lot about them. He's played 508 games in the NBL to be number six in games played. Eight years here in Adelaide. Grand final MVP winning with North Melbourne in 94 as one of his four championships. And went to the World Championships in 94 as well. A decorated player. The longest serving captain in the league, Brett Maher, goes to the free throw line. He took 104 free throws in the regular season and hit 90 of them. Well, Adelaide has scored the last six. They've closed to within three. And pressure up the floor. As Stewart finds Budnikov. Now Darnell Mee back to Budnikov, who's left alone. He's been streaky, and he knocks it down again. Three of four from long range, Gary Budnikov, after he was none of seven two nights ago. Well, that extended pressure time, trying to take the basketball out of Darnell Mee's hands, they did a good job of getting to the open areas. Brett Maher surrounded, retreats to Oscar Foreman, now Farley firing, and he comes up with the goods with his first field goal of the match. Now that's great ball movement by Adelaide. Very similar to what just happened on the other end of the floor by Cairns. Darnell Mee gets away from Farley. Oakley back to Budnikov. Foreman giving him close attention. Stewart pulls the trigger unsuccessfully. Saipan's now 5 of 10 from long range. Adelaide 1 of 2 in that category, although Brett Maher will improve it now. Caught it a little deep. Loose balls. Bills to Nash. The X-Factor adds another 2. 
Kansas is lucky that it wasn't three. How often will Brent Marr be that wide open and miss? And starting to warm to the occasion now as Darnell Me penetrates, kicks to Stewart who works the baseline, needs help. Budnikov inside Foreman, makes a beeline to the hoop a little too hard off the window. Foreman the loose ball. Farley has Stewart to beat, fancies his chances, now retreats to Brett Maher and he knocks down number 998 in his three-point career and Adelaide are back in front. They've scored the last eight. Super play by Willie Farley who's doing a good job of defending Darnell Me, making him work extra hard. Now it's Darnell Me kicking it to Oakley. He fires from long range off the money, and Nash grabs another rebound. Number four for him in that category. Off the bench, he leads that category in the game. Ma, Foreman, ready to go, feeling confident. Adelaide are on fire. They've scored the last 11, they lead by five, and the Taipans have got some problems. Farley giving Darnell Me plenty to think about. Hands have gone three-point crazy here in the last three or four minutes. Can't get anything happening inside with Burgess sitting down. Stewart surrounded by three defenders, lost control. And Adelaide with a three-on-three -three fast break. No-look pass from Brett Martin Nash. And Mark Nash will be off to the free throw line as Melvin Thomas picks up his second personal. Anthony Stewart puts it on the floor. That's just good defense. Weak side coming from Oscar Foreman. Adelaide have turned it up with the intensity on the defense. But it was keyed by those two wide open misses by Anthony Stewart, weren't able to convert on that. And then Adelaide were able to convert on the other end. You know, when a team is hot, you have to look at, OK, are we getting good shots? Cans are getting good shots. Nathan Crosswell into the game and Willie Farley doesn't put the pressure on him that he had on Darnell Me. He's got to make sure he doesn't rest on Nathan Crosswell. He's very good at getting to the rim. Adelaide has scored the last 12 points here. Burgess back into the game trying to post up Paul Rees. Shot clock to six as Budnikov fires at a jump out of the cylinder. Cairns have taken 11 three-point attempts. In fact, 12 now of the 19 field goals they've attempted. Reichardt losing control of the ball and out of court. Adelaide turn it over for the third time. Cairns just with one turnover so far. We saw against the Hunter Pirates, Cairns went into that drought into the fourth quarter. So you know that they're capable of that, but they just have to refocus, make some adjustments. Rabeau picks up the dribble now. Burgess working on Jacob Holmes. Needs support provided by Oakley at the elbow. And Kane Oakley gets the job done. His first points in the match. That snaps the drought for Cairns. Disney shooting the basketball so much more confidence. That's why it's hard to double down on Burgess because he's finding guys that are shooting the basketball with confidence and hitting them. Eight second differential between the game clock and the shot clock. Farley traveling after some good D was played by the Cairns Taipans. Burgess, he must feel very confident because he's moving a lot better than he was early in the basketball game. As you see, not opting to take the shot. He gets the assist on that one. It was just the movement that was impressive. Crosswell penetrating, kicking to Oakley, the hot man at the moment, this time unsuccessful. Jacob Holmes grabbing the rebound with his shot clock about to go off, couldn't finish it off, but an entertaining first term concludes here with Adelaide holding a four-point lead. At quarter time, it's Adelaide 30, leading Cairns 26 here on Fox Sports. Well, the Cairns Taipans, they've only taken four of their first 21 shots inside the paint, so... You know, when you're shooting the basketball well, that's that's all well and good. But when it dries up, you have to have a plan of how to get the basketball back into the paint with some ball movement, ball reversals, kick it in and try and get your big interior players a little time and a little bit of space for them to operate. And Adelaide have done a good job of Obviously hitting some shots, that always helps, but defensively they've been able to get cans out of their rhythm. Throwing a little
little zone up and just mixing it up. Only once in their last seven games have Cairns hit more than 10 threes in a game. They managed only five on Thursday night. At six of 25 they were. They are five of 13 here. So that's a, an unhealthy equation for them when 13 of their 21 field goal attempts have come from long range. Here's Crosswell to Budnikov. who works inside the three-point line. Had it rattle around and Burgess comes up with a tip in. He has six in the game. That's better ball movement. Crosswell does a good job of getting it into the areas where he can pass to open shooters. Brett Maher working the baseline, running out of room. Pass intended for Nash, picked up by Holmes. Now Rijkaard with seven on the shot clock goes to work, and he is fouled and will earn a trip to the free throw line. Martin Catalini picks up the foul. Dusty also, although he hasn't hit a lot of shots, has proved to be a tough cover. He's putting it on the floor real well. And Cairns is one team that cannot afford to get key players in foul trouble. Don't seem to have the depth that other teams do. Dusty Reichart, 59% from the free throw line this season. He gets there more than any other Adelaide player. The conversion hasn't been where the coaching staff would like at the moment, but Adelaide with a three-point lead. Early stages, term number two. Catalini takes on Nash, reaching in. Brett Ma relieved him of possession. It spills to Jacob Holmes. Now Foreman kicking back to Reichart against Catalini. And Catalini's picked up his third personal foul here. That is a worrying sign for coach Alan Black, considering Catalini carried this team to victory on Thursday night. Good hands by Brett Maher, and the damage is done here. I thought that was soft. I, I bet Cat would like that call on the other end of the floor. Brett Maher elevating top of the key, knocking down another triple to the delight of the fans here. He's into double figures to lead all scorers. Brett Maher looks fresh. You know, they're a different team when he is looking healthy. Burgess showing Reichardt the ball. Foreman arrives for the double team. Grabeau bubbled the pass. Shot clock now down to five for the Taipans. Grabeau takes them on. Good D from Jacob Holmes. And Foreman cleans up with the rebound. Adelaide, 15 rebounds to seven. A killing. Cairns at the moment in that category. Foreman wide open. Knocks down another triple. Adelaide, five of seven from long range at 71%. They're just not getting that extra rotation. They're setting good screens for Brett Maher in the open court, and they're getting two guys to play the rotations, and then the third one is allowing the wide-open shooter for 36ers who've been able to knock down the threes. Crosswell penetrating, found an opening and an easy two. The whistle provided by Scott Butler, a chance at a three-point play. Foul is going to be called on Oscar Foreman. And we've seen teams hang around in the playoffs here. Not the Wollongong Hawks, but we've seen teams hang around. Brisbane was able to do it against the Perth Wildcats in the first elimination final, and they had a crack at the end, tied it up at 85. But Cans are doing a good job of sticking with a red-hot 36ers who are shooting five of seven outside the three-point line. you got to feel like that's going to dry up, and they're only down six. Nash goes to Farley. He's had plenty of treatment all night. Winning the glove treatment from Darnell Mee. And Farley just one of one from the field. It was a long range three as Brett Maher takes on Grabeau. Again, Darnell Mee denied Farley the ball, so they go to Reichart. Burgess grabs the rebound. And the Taipans with Nathan Cross were running the show. Darnell Mee sneaks back door and gets the job done as well. His first points in the game. I really like the backcourt of Crosswell and Mee. Two guys that can penetrate and find their teammates. Makes them just look a lot more dangerous where they don't have to settle on their half-court offense all the time. Nash against Burgess. Finds Reichardt working on Kane Oakley. Spinning baseline forced into a tough shot. Good D from Oakley. Darnell Mee surveys the options. Finds Grabeau. Burgess posting up Nash. What a job Nash has done with Cooper sitting down with three fouls at the moment. And now Crosswell. 
The shot clock working to 10 and now beyond. Darnell Mee for a deep three is off the money. Loose ball comes back to Darnell Mee. Grabeau tries his luck from long range. That is deep, but it's Kane Oakley keeping it alive. Second and third opportunities here for the tight bands. Crosswell to Oakley, guarded by Jacob Holmes. The hook shot from Oakley never looked likely. And Adelaide eventually get the loose ball. I don't mind that. You know, he had good post position, made a good strong move to the inside, and the more confident he is, the more he's likely to hit a shot like that. Farley has Nash at the top of the key, and he decides to fire from long range off the front of the rim. Jacob Holmes grabs the rebound, but a foul is going to be called on Dusty Riker. That will be his second personal. That's the backdoor play by Darnell Mee from Nathan Crosswell. Very underrated player, Nathan Crosswell. Burgess harassed by Paul Rees. Now Oakley going to Crosswell. They look for the lob play into Burgess. Ball trickles out of court and Adelaide will come up with it. Alan Black has had a tremendous rivalry with Phil Smythe. It's 14-13 head-to-head in favour of Phil Smythe. As Darnell Mee takes it at Jacob Holmes. And Adelaide will restart with 19 on the shot clock. I would encourage Adelaide not to have Jacob Holmes handling the basketball too much around Darnell Mee. Reichardt to Brett Maher. Now Farley. Skip pass for Jacob Holmes. Elevating for the triple. A little deep with it. Burgess grabs the rebound. And now Crosswell with Grabeau working up the floor quickly along with Darnell Mee and Kane Oakley. Crosswell penetrates, did an excellent job. Back to a two-point ball game. The Cairns Taipans closing in here have scored the last seven points. Farley, tough shot against Grabeau, but he knocks it down. You cannot get discouraged when he starts hitting shots like that. You... Grabeau couldn't have played any better D. Burgess finds Crosswell again operating down on the baseline and an excellent finish again with a non-preferred right hand. Now it's Can starting to get the easy baskets ever since Nathan Crosswell's come into the lineup. They've been able to get some good high percentage shots. Farley step back against Grabeau and it's all the bottom of the net again for Willie Farley. See, but it's still only a four-point game. Adelaide are hitting tough shots. And Cairns have to keep that in mind. Keep getting high percentage shots and matching them on the scoreboard. Burgess against Paul Rees. Mark comes across for the double team. Crosswell to Darnell Mee. Shot clock down to seven. And Burgess misses the alley of play. Scooped up by Grabeau, who goes back to work with a party trick. And it tumbles for Aaron Grabeau. Perhaps wow. thinking that the shot clock was still winding down after Burgess missed the dunk. That was some sort of finish. And Grabeau hustled after it. Jacob Holmes just put, took his foot off the pedal. And it turned into a bucket for him. Third team foul called on Cairns in this period. It's Nathan Crosswell who picks up the personal. <laughs> he had nowhere to go. And was able to put it up nice and soft. Now Aaron Grabeau has to continue to keep that solid defense on Willie Farley. Not get discouraged by those two tough shots he just hit over a good defensive hand. Paul Reese for Reichardt, who had a good seal on Crosswell. And Crosswell called for the foul again. And that's number four on Cairns in this period. We have still have more than six minutes to play in the first half. Adelaide probably didn't want that one called because that was a layup if they don't call him for that one. Farley restarts to Paul Reese, guarded by Melvin Thomas. That could be an interesting battle between two fiery customers. Ma penetrating, finds Jacob Holmes on the foul line, couldn't finish it. Reichardt, the offensive rebound, rejected by Kane Oakley with the excellent defensive play. Crosswell has Grabeau in support. Ma did a good job to defuse the situation. And Adelaide come back the other way with Jacob Holmes, finding Paul Reese close to the hoop. And in game number 580, opens his scoring account. That was a duck. That was just a duck they just gave away. Cairns had a two-on-one fast break. 
This cross will penetrating again, finding Melvin Thomas close to the hoop, who adds the finishing touches with his first score in the game. <laughs> it's like bucket for bucket. Neither, key, neither team can stop the other one. Adelaide by two, a little over five minutes left in the first half. And now the scores are going to be level. Crosswell will get upstairs. Alex just to go for the layup to add the two. He's had an influence, didn't score in the first quarter. Crosswell has nine of the Taipan 17 in this term. And he's an underrated defender too. They try him on Willie Farley. Jacob Holmes coming in over the back of Daniel Mee is called for the foul. His first personal. Darnell Mee comes down with that. Jacob Holmes talking about the fact that he thought that Darnell Mee threw him an elbow. And very well, could happen. <laughs> Whatever it takes. Darnell Mee taking on Willie Farley, drawing a foul. That's the fourth on Adelaide in this second term. Seeing a championship experience here of Darnell Mee. Getting inside the head of Willie Farley a little. And here they are again at it. Mee works the baseline. Couldn't finish it from close range. And Adelaide off and running. Tied ball game. Four and a half to play until the major break. Farley hands off to Ma. Now Foreman to Jacob Holmes. Guarded by Melvin Thomas. He works to the baseline. Needs help. Brett Ma for a long range three. Couldn't finish it. Kept alive by Jacob Holmes, the foreman. He couldn't hit it, but Dusty Reichardt can. He has nine in the game. Only Brett Maher with ten has more in the match. Well, this has been a very entertaining affair. Both teams having the momentum at various stages as Daniel Mee kicks the Melvin Thomas ready to go. Caught it a little deep, and Jacob Holmes grabs the rebound for Adelaide. Now Brett Ma with Reichardt in support, kicks it to him now, and Reichardt gets an open look, and he knocks down the three. Adelaide a 6 of 11 from long range at 55%. Great play by Brett Ma. That's what they missed when he was out of the lineup, his ability to draw the D. And he's able to peel this one off of his back. And still, look at this, he goes and puts it on the floor, draws to wide open Dusty Reichardt. Bingo. Well, timeout called by the Adelaide 36 as they scored the last five to lead by five points, but they've also picked up five fouls in this period. And the Cairns Taipans have four fouls in this period so far. What has been a seesawing affair here in the second term. Adelaide 18, Cairns 17 at the moment. Taipans haven't won here for two and a half years, a three-game drought. Let's see what Alan Black has on his mind at the moment. Uh, we're small now. We're going to put some body on some people in gang rebound. Don't just leave it to two or three. Let's get five people down in on the defensive line. Offensively, let's run some twos. All right, run some twos, and let's see what we can get out of it. Once you come over, once you come over, all right, if you can get something great, if we kick it back, we've got triple handoffs happening. All right? Come on, boys. You guys stay with us. Over 236 victories to his credit as a head coach in the NBL. Alan Black not too concerned at the moment. Nathan Crosswell has been the man here in the second period. Well, he's been able to get to the rim finish himself or find his teammates. In the first quarter, the Cairns Taipans only took four shots inside the paint. They took 13 threes in the first quarter and only two in the second quarter. So they've addressed that, made the adjustment. And even though Adelaide are on fire, or really they are they're still on fire outside the three-point line, they've been able to hold pace with them and keep this thing close. And that's what you want to do when a team is on fire, especially outside the three-point line. You just want to be able to hang around and not get blown out. And the Taipans doing this without the services of Martin Catalini, who sits on the bench with three fouls at the moment. Likewise, David Cooper has three fouls and hasn't seen a lot of court time. 
as Jacob Holmes spins baseline and Kane Oakley is again there with a block shot. The pass from Budnikov though was a poor one and a foul is going to be called on Darnell Mee. Of course, no continuation, but that is the fifth foul on the Taipans in this period as well. well Oakley's good work was undone here. Excellent block shot. Then the pass from Budnikov intended for Darnell Mee was a poor one. And Willie Fahl is off to the free throw line where he is 84% this season, number seven in the NBL. Well, you, you tell young kids that you try not to throw cross-court passes. And Willie Farley has been up and in on Darnell Me. They're trying to tire him out, make him work, and in the fourth quarter have his shots fall short and have him not be so active in getting into the paint. Terrific battle between them at the moment. It's Darnell Me. Goes to Catalini, who's brought back into the equation here with three minutes to play until half time. This is Budnikov firing over Brett Maher, short armed it. Jacob Holmes with the rebound. A double team arrives, needs help, gets it to Brett Maher. Now Foreman close to the hoop is fouled by Kane Oakley. Three throws to come for Oscar Foreman. I'm not convinced Kane Oakley was making a play for the ball there either. He looked around like. At first, I thought he looked around like, oh, you know, that couldn't be on me, but I think he was afraid that it was going to be unsportsmanlike. But that's a good foul, you know. Get, try and keep the crowd out of the game. It wasn't a great possession for Cans on the last one, but one thing they've got to do is they've got to locate Adelaide better in transition. Also, be ready for the fact that Rykar and the bigs for Adelaide are set screens. Mark Nash was doing a good job of setting screens for especially Brett Maher in transition. You've got Budnikov, stay on the floor on the hand. You've got Burgess, okay? You've got Darnell, so it's Catalini for you. So I think I came in for Oakley, it's either Oakley or Cat. Catalini's in the game on you, he's got three fouls, so move the ball, then you want to get him on a cut and try and get more on the penetration than the post line, okay? Offensively, call the three or the thumb right now, unless we push it and it's 44, okay? You're running the show for us. Fellas, defensively, nothing easy, let's get on the ball. Let's go, we're going to run. Adelaide have come to play. It looked a little tentative early in the game, and Cairns are just going about their business, and my criticism of Adelaide has been compared to the championship teams is they can't get the stops that they used to get in the past but with Willie Farley putting all kind of defensive heat on Darnell me it just seems as if the intensity has they followed suit he's doing it up top and his team is starting to follow his way defensively and they've looked better tonight at the defensive end of the floor Foreman 75 percent from the free throw line this year has been good an outside chance to be selected in the Commonwealth game squad tomorrow, of course, with no Glenn Savile now. Someone will get an opportunity. And it's Adelaide with a seven-point lead. Both teams have led by as many as nine. We haven't had a double-figure lead in the match so far. Two and a half to play until the major break. Burgess posting up Jacob Holmes, muscling his way in close, but kicking outside where Darnell Mee fires unsuccessfully. Kept alive by Catalini, who gets it back from Burgess. Fans thought he may have travelled there as Crosswell penetrates against Brad Hill, and Crosswell, the man on a mission, is now into double figures. His 11 points have all come in this term. Single-handedly, he's kept them in it. He has 11 of Cairns' 20 in this term. Well, he hasn't made a bad decision yet. Riker getting a slow pass from Willie Farley, but getting a second opportunity. Burgess was asking where was the help D after he had made a good defensive play initially. And Adelaide with a seven-point buffer once more. He definitely did his job. If he didn't block that shot, he definitely changed it. Daniel Me to Budnikov. Down low, Burgess against the double team. They spread it where Catalini is the open man. And despite the presence of Dusty Riker, Catalini comes up with his first three in the game. Here's Riker posting up Catalini, spinning baseline, forcing the issue and getting the job done. Riker now with 16 in the match, leads all scorers. Catalini to Crosswell, guarded by Brad Hill. 
now Budnikov. Shot clock rolls for single numbers for the Taipans. Back to Crosswell, who looks for Burgess. Three on the shot clock. They need to get busy. Crosswell is unconscious at the moment. 13 in this term. He should be a little more reluctant to give the basketball up with the shot clock winding down the way he's been able to get to the rim. Shot clock to single numbers now for Adelaide as well. Brad Hill into the match for the first time yet to score. Kicks it to Foreman. The danger from three-point territory. He caught it deep. Loose ball grabbed by the big man, Chris Burgess. Number six in the rebound count for him. He joins Mark Nash as the game leader in that category. It's Budnikov. Skip pass for Crosswell. The shot clock here is going to be just three seconds inside the game clock as we head toward the major break. Crosswell against Foreman now in a mismatch, forces his way past, couldn't finish that off, Jacob Holmes grabs the loose ball, and now Foreman on the halftime buzzer! Not far away, and an entertaining first half from Adelaide finishes with the 36ers in front by four. Adelaide 55, leads Cairns 51, here on Fox Sports. 25 points apiece in that second period. So Adelaide's four-point quarter-time margin maintained here at the half as we get to Willie Farley with Steve. Willie looks like you're leading from the front defensively, making it very tough on Darnell me in that extended pressure. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to just try to pick and pick and choose where you like to go and go. And if I pick him up with quarter court, it'll wear him down a little bit. And I see that he's lacking that he's missing a couple of shots. So I think I'm doing a really good job. Yeah, he's doing a very good job. And it hadn't seemed to take away from your offense as well, setting up Brett Maher and hitting some shots yourself. And that's the thing that I'm trying to do now. Now that I'm on I'm, I'm a better shape than I was in the beginning of the season, I'm just trying to feel my way around the defensive end and still have enough energy to play offense. You have to be pretty happy with how you guys are going, shooting the basketball well. You're doing a good job of drawing the defense, kicking and throwing that extra pass. Your teammates are knocking the shot down. You think a performance like that in the second half will be good enough to get the win? Probably even better. The way we're doing now, I mean, it's playoffs time. We got to leave everything on the court. You know, there's no telling who's going to be here next year or not. So right now, as collective as this team, we just got to keep doing on what we're doing. All right, thanks, Willie. Thanks, Steve. Willie Farley there for the Adelaide 36ers who are doing their best not to get eliminated and make it to the semifinal. We'll be back right after the break. to Adelaide, the distinctive Holmes Dome. They know how to win championships here. There they hang. 1986 was the first. 98 and 99 back to back when Catalini and Darnell Me were running the show. And then again in 2002. And six of the players who were there in 2002 are with this team still, which is quite a contrast when you consider in Wollongong last night, only Matt Campbell and Glenn Savile, who did not play, are the only two remaining in Wollongong from 2001. It's quite a statistic and a telling one. Yeah, it is. I was actually quite surprised when you pointed that one out about Wollongong. And they've done, and I just thought in the back of my head that Wollongong had done a great job of keeping core players there. Cooper starts the second half with those three fouls. What an excellent defensive play from Darnell Mee. Reichardt was adding another two to his tally, and Darnell from nowhere rejected the shot. An excellent defensive play. Now Darnell Mee to Budnikov. Shot block of 10 now for the Cairns Taipans. They've gone back to their original five as well. They left Bravo alone. He knocked down two quick threes at the start of the match. Couldn't connect there. But they don't, you don't get much better hustle than you get from Aaron Graveau. The possession arrow was with Cairns. He wins it back for them. Not many players in the league play harder than Aaron Graveau. And that's a shot he will knock down. Hopefully he doesn't lose any confidence by shooting that one so short. But his ability to knock that shot down and not allow his man to sag into the paint, that's what Alan Black was talking about at halftime. Adelaide love the sag in the paint. They're very good at who they want to guard out in the perimeter and who they don't. And they feel like Aaron Grabo is a guy that they can sag off of. And early in the game, he was able to knock a couple of them down. We've seen him shoot the basketball with a lot more confidence from the perimeter this year. Tie bands down by four. Fresh shot clock for them. Early stages, term number three. 
Catalini to Budnikov. Now to Darnell Meek. Inside where Burgess is operating against an army of defenders. He thought he was fouled. There appeared to be contact with the referee safe play on. Holmes to Rijkaard. Skip pass, finding Farley, working on Grabeau with some active hands. Now the shot clock down to 10 for Adelaide. Rijkaard inside Burgess, lost control of the ball when a foul is called on Burgess. It's his first in the match. He'd be upset, not the fact that they called this one, because he gets his leg in there and that jars the basketball loose because he actually ran into the arm of D Dusty Rijkaard. He's upset about not getting that call on the other end. Farley guarded by Budnikov. Steps back beyond the line. Oh, had a foot on there, in fact. It's called a two by Tom Mills, but Adelaide streak out to a six-point advantage. First blood in the second half to the home side, but not for long as the Cairns Taipans come up with the goods, and Aaron Grabeau's into double figures. Season high of 15 came way back in September. It's in some danger here. Cooper. Puts it on the floor, retreats to Riker. Now Brett Ma, single numbers on the shot clock for the captain. Cooper baseline, that's how he started the match with a shot. Couldn't finish it there. Catalini grabs the rebound, and here come the Taipans once more. Budnikov in the corner, Grabeau, who has the hot hand. This time overcooked it. Burgess appeared to foul Cooper there. They're told to play on. Referees, as they have done so far in the playoffs, just putting the whistles away a little as Ma fires unsuccessfully. Holmes, the offensive rebound. And now Adelaide with another opportunity. Adelaide has nine offensive rebounds. Can seven. Reichardt goes to work. Comes up with a finish. The Thai fans thought he travelled. So did I. Probably everybody in the building thought he travelled. He caught the basketball, took two steps before he put the ball on the floor. Darnell Mee worried out of possession there by Willie Farley, who just blindsided him a little. We'll get another look at that and watch Dusty Reichardt. He goes, catches it. One, two. And it looked awkward. But he got a piece of the basketball, too, and that made it look even more difficult. Cooper, monstered by Burgess, who takes a knock to the face. No whistle forthcoming. And now Brett Maher fouls Catalina to prevent an easy layup. First personal for the captain, Brett Ma. The referees, I'm not sure if they came back with their whistle, Steve. <laughs> That's a very good foul by Brett Ma. Coop goes down hard. And this is a good foul by Brett Ma before Cat can get it upstairs and go for two shots at the free throw line. Adelaide by six, played almost three minutes, term number three. Grabeau. Now Catalini, Reichardt wrestling with Burgess close to the hoop. Catalini with a tough shot, but he makes it tumble. He's into double figures. The fourth Cairns player in that category. Adelaide has three in double figures. Ah, to Farley, working away from Budnikov, finding Cooper with an excellent pass. Cooper couldn't finish it, though. Upstairs, Jacob Holmes with a tip in of the season. Play. Catalini says he was fouled, but like an AFL player, Jacob Holmes over the back athletically to tip it in. Yeah, we want to see whether he illegally went over the back like a mark. Catalini back to Grabeau. In support, Burgess turns down the shot. Now Budnikov appeared to be fouled by Holmes, and that's the call from Tom Mills. Free throws to come now for Gary Budnikov. Nobody gets a body on Jacob Holmes. He gets a run and start. He goes over the back legally. I don't think he went, he used anybody, anybody's back to assist him in elevating so high. Just great timing by Jacob Holmes. Taipans have been good from the strike. Seven of nine so far in the match. Adelaide 9 of 12 from the free throw line so far. This is as well as I've seen Willie Farley play in a while. He's been so patient, hasn't taken any bad shots. Probably the bad shots that he's taken have all gone down. But he, after he hit a couple of tough ones, he continues to play smart and find his teammates and playing great D on the other end of the floor. Ma kicking to Cooper. 
who looks for Reichardt, spinning on Darnell Meek, confronted by Burgess. They thought he travelled again. Referees didn't see it that way, and Reichardt has 20 points and five rebounds. The magic number, Steve told us pre-game, was 20 and 10 boards, an Adelaide win. Well, they're looking the goods, they lead by seven. Darnell Meek kicking to Budnikov, working inside Jacob Holmes, confronted by Reichardt, excellent D, excellent work from Budnikov though, he stayed with it, got a second effort to tumble, and drew a foul in the process. And got a late whistle at that. Watch him follow his shot here, he pretty much had nowhere to go, threw it up on the backboard and went and got it. And then they get his arm as he lets that thing go, it was a late whistle, that's why Adelaide's bench just erupted. Well, Taipan's hanging tough. Down by four. A little over seven minutes to play in the third period. Brett Ma penetrating. Darnell Mee reaching in, called for the foul. That's going to be his second personal. Brett Ma with that great hesitation. Watch him stand up Darnell Mee as he hesitated. Those long arms gets in the way of him scoring the deuce on a layup. Ma against Budnikov. Waves Farley away. Now needs help. Reichardt rejected by Daniel Mee and Burgess in tandem. That's an excellent defensive play. At the other end, Budnikov gets in for the layup and cans are back to within two. Fans Can't. don't like it. They thought that Reichardt was fouled as he was monstered by Daniel Mee and Chris Burgess. We'll get another look at it. Watch the help defense. And Darnell Mee from the weak side. That's all ball, baby. And Cairns, since they've been, and that's how it resulted after the great defensive play. And Cairns, since they've had that good form, it's been at the defensive end of the floor. Mark. Well, Adelaide needing a steadying basket. He retreats, and it's picked off by Grabeau. What a night Aaron Grabeau is having. Now Darnell Mee. Good hands from Jacob Holmes. Can't keep it alive, though. Good hustle from Adelaide as Nash and Foreman check in. Holmes and Cooper sit down. This is great contest here. It sure is. Darnell Mee said to Gary Budnikov, look, if you're not open, don't call for it. We're about to restart. Had some trouble doing so. Six and a half minutes left in this third turn. Taipans have outscored Adelaide 10 8 so far as Budnikov gets by Oscar Foreman. Couldn't finish it again, got his own rebound and adds another two. The Taipans have tied it away. They've scored the last seven. Tremendous effort by Gary Budnikov. He is competing. Budnikov has eight of Kant's 12 points in this period. Foreman. Looking for Farley, wrestling with Grabeau. Grabeau picks up the foul. It's number three on the Taipans in this period, and the second for Grabeau personally. And he has to play D like that. Aaron Grabeau is a physical, strong, defensive player. Gets called for the foul there, but now they've got Nathan Crosswell, and that gives him a different look. Crosswell's a good defender as well, but he gives him that extra dribble penetration. Melvin Thomas into the match as well, and Anthony Stewart about to join us. As Foreman goes to Farley, back to Foreman. Call for a travelling violation. Excellent D on that occasion coming from Martin Catalini. Tied at 63. A spot in the semi-finals up for grabs. The season over for the loser tonight. Crosswell pulling up for the jumper. This time short on the rim. Reichardt grabs the rebound, number six in that category. Ma has Nash and Farley ahead of him. Takes on Crosswell and with a left-handed hook shot, Brett Ma gets his first points in the second half. Here's Stewart with some problems. Somehow kept it alive to teammate Martin Catalini. And Darnell Mee takes it from Crosswell. Looking for some penetration. Kick to Stewart. 
He hands back to Darnell Me. Shot clock down to six for the Taipans. Me penetrating, firing over Brett Ma. It rattled out of the cylinder. Darnell one of five from the field in this match. But his input isn't reflected in those numbers as Farley shows Crosswell some tricks. Looks down low for Nash. Pass deflected by the Taipans. And they're off and running. Here's Stewart. Now Darnell Me. They find Stewart on the three-point line. He goes back to Darnell Me. Now Catalini elevates from close range. Couldn't hey. finish it. Excellent defensive work from Oscar Foreman. I thought he actually hit the rim, which is illegal. You can knock the ball off of the rim, but I don't think you can actually hit the rim when it's on it. Brett Maher harassed by Melvin Thomas, steps away, slows it down. Shot clock rolls to single numbers. And the captain against Melvin Thomas elevates. Did a lap of honor, wooden tumble. And Martin Catalini cleans up with a rebound. Number five for Catalini in that category after he had a game high 18 rebounds two nights ago. Less than four minutes away from three-quarter time. Adelaide lead it by two. Catalini from long range can't change the equation. Now Farley looking ominous against Catalini playing with three fouls. Farley forces his way past, couldn't finish it. Catalini stepped up big time here in the third period. Has support on both wings against Mark Nash. Takes them on, couldn't finish it. A lot of slapping there. Was that a foul? Well, not according to referee Tom Mills. And the reaction by Catalini wasn't even like he got bumped at all. Farley against Stewart, spinning into the paint, down to the baseline. That is some sort of play. Couldn't finish it off. And the pass from Catalini finds Crosswell. Stewart pulls off to the left. But Crosswell slows it down here. I think Kansas need a timeout. They have a couple of players look tired. Inside the last three minutes, term number three. Stewart from long range fills it up and gives the Taipans the lead. That extra shooter. Budnikov goes to the bench. Grabo goes to the bench. And Anthony Stewart is that extra guy on the extra pass that can knock it down. Taipans in front for the first time since the opening quarter as Brett Mark draws a foul on Melvin Thomas. Fourth team foul on Cairns in this period. Continuation will not count. And Nostradamus Steve Carpino has hit it on the head here as Alan Black calls timeout for the Taipans. 2.38 left on the clock in this third period. And the Snakes started this term down by four. They lead at 66-65 at the moment. Well, we anticipated a good game. I really didn't anticipate a game this good. You know, they're scoring at a high rate. Some big, not a great shooting percentage, but they're making some big plays. Both of these teams in these different momentum swings have been able to make adjustments. Let's listen to these. Offensively, we got to look to push the ball. We've got to push it. Then if it's not there, pull it. Well, you carry the ball. Okay. Offensively, want to be in our 42. So we're in our 42, set a good screen, find the ball. You might find it going to the basket. If it's not there, step back out and create some space. Okay, once again, fellas, they're running in mud, but only if we push the ball, pull it, and then make them work. Okay, it's not three or four passes nice, then we'll go. If you've got an opportunity after a couple to penetrate and go, that's making them work. Put it in there and kick it back out. Okay, get on the ball. Here we go. Adelaide haven't been able to get to the free throw line since half time. And the Taipans, 15 points to 10 in this period, have taken the lead. These free throws will be the first for Adelaide. In fact, it's a side ball, and Jacob Holmes will do the honours. 2.38 to play, and Adelaide trail by a point. Paul Reese against another veteran, Melvin Thomas, now Farley to Holmes, working against Darnell Mee, picks up the dribble and travelled under pressure. Adelaide turned it over for the ninth time. Cairns have five in that category. That turnover caused by defensive pressure. Both teams have been able to do it to the other one at certain points of the game. Anthony Stewart fires unsuccessfully. Nash got a piece of it, but it's trickling out of court. The two Adelaide players had it surrounded, and the Taipans will get another opportunity. 
Neither team really lighting it up in this period. Adelaide have hit just five field goals. Taipans have hit only six. Stewart trying to find a way past Mark Nash eventually does. Now Daniel Meter Crosswell at the top of the key, working on Foreman and others. Needs support. Kane Oakley's ready to go and coming up with the goods as well. well that's a big shot. Shot clock winding down. Kane Oakley didn't even catch that thing clean. Still buried it. Never looked like missing. Taipan's taking the fans out of the equation for the moment as Foreman goes to work. He's rejected by Darnell Me again. I don't know how he does that. <laughs> Big swipe. Gets it clean. All ball. Six block shots for Cairns. Two for Adelaide. As Paul Reese takes the hit from Melvin Thomas. And now Foreman. Back to the big man. Announces retirement this week. One on the shot clock. He goes to work. Couldn't finish it. Loose ball scooped up by the Taipans and Crosswell. Looking confident. With 90 seconds to play in the third, it's Anthony Stewart hitting a big three. The Cairns Taipans have scored the last eight. They lead by six. Now it's Adelaide with poor transition defense. You cannot leave Anthony Stewart wide open like that for an easy look. Paul Reese working into the paint, forces his way to the basket and off the window. It's an important bucket for the Adelaide 36ers. I know he's talking about retiring, but he has a knack in big games to come up with a big play when you don't expect it at all. Daniel Mee gets it from Crosswell, goes back in that direction. Here's Stewart firing, this time unsuccessfully. Farley has Holmes ahead of him, rushing up the floor, drawing a foul on Crosswell. And Farley will go to the free throw line. It's the fifth team foul on the Taipans in this period. That's a good foul. Crosswell knows he's beat, knows Adelaide has numbers. Not necessarily has numbers, but he's taken the crowd out of the game. Crowd just sitting down, watching a couple of free throws instead of him making a spectacular play, turning around, turning the corner and using his athleticism. You pretty much have to give away too because Farley's an excellent free throw shooter. Can't make the back end. Melvin Thomas clings up for the Taipans who lead by three. Heading towards three quarter time. Rick Maher about to check back in. It's Oakley. Hands off to Budnikov. He's been big in this third period. Eight of his 18 since half time. Stewart going on with a dribble. Shot clock down to four now for the Taipans. Melvin Thomas to Oakley again on the buzzer. This time unsuccessfully. Nash the rebound. Adelaide with plenty of time here. Shot clock not in effect, and Adelaide will slow it down for the last play of term number three. Restricted to only 13 points so far in this term. And it rattles around the rim and tumbles. Adelaide close to within one. Melvin Thomas on the buzzer from half court. Goes a little deep. And with one quarter to play and a semi-final spot on the line, we have a one-point ball game. What a thriller. Live and exclusive to Fox Sports. It's Cairns 71, Adelaide 70. This is a very close play. Let's go, thumbs, have a look over the top if it's there. If not, we're going high low in the dress. Right? Second play, we're going by to the side of Chris. So first two plays of Chris, and then let's play out. Do we can do, fellas? Well, the Taipans lead by a point, one quarter to play. If you would like to catch up with all the latest news results and highlights, press the red button for Fox Sports News Active. And foxsports.com.au, the number one sports website in the country, is where you need to look. It will keep you right up to speed with everything that is happening in the world of sport. And what a busy time it is for Fox Sports. Live Super 14, live A-League, live international golf from Perth, live NBL. We just keep it coming. Adelaide with a possession arrow to get underway in the fourth term. As Maher finds Reichardt again stumbling towards the hoop. A whistle provided by Scott Butler and a foul is going to be called on the Cairns Taipans. It's Burgess who picks up his second. Well, two of the three matches played this year between these teams were decided by two points and one point. Maybe we're going to get another thriller as well here.
Yeah. <laughs> okay, so sorry, I didn't respond to that one right there. But and every time somebody loses their footing, you don't need to call a foul. Crosswell starting the final period in advance of Darnell Mee. Budnikov has Catalini. Lob pass down low for Burgess. Double team for Vogue. Now Crosswell from close range. Sneaks inside Rijkaard. Catalini, four on the shot clock. He works into the paint. Can't finish. And this is Gary Budnikov with a clean up two. He has 20 in the match to lead the Cairns Taipans. Ma. Now Jacob Holmes with Catalini retreating away from him. Holmes looks to get to the foul line, fires the jumper, and Jacob Holmes, who was two of seven before firing that shot, comes up with a big basket. That is a big basket. And they need to get support from guys other than Willie Farley and Brett Maher and Dusty Reichart to be able to pull this one off because Cans are playing well. Grabo's off of the key. Shot clock down to six, and Grabo marches inside to get another two. 12 in the match now for Aaron Grabo and a seesawing affair. Cairns are back in front. Because Cairns are getting it from the Grabos and the Nathan Crosswells. They're stepping up. This is Farley shaking Crosswell. Couldn't finish it, however. And Gary Budnikov working hard grabs rebound number seven. Almost two minutes played in this final term. Crosswell. In a mismatch against Reichardt now after shaking Foreman. He takes them all on, couldn't finish it. Loose ball, Burgess got a piece of it. But Farley has Brett Maher and Jacob Holmes in support. Goes back to the captain. And now Reichardt to Holmes against Catalini to the baseline. Double team needs help. Here's Reichardt from close range. And again, he's been fouled. Reichardt inevitably is in the right place at the right time. He's got a great nose for the ball. Also, he sees that his teammate is struggling. So he gets to the open area, gives him an angle. That is just something in basketball that is not taught very well. You, got, you can't just say, okay, well, he's got a great nose of where to be at the right place at the right time. No, he's just a smart player who thinks the game through. Two people on him, hands everywhere. He can't expect Jacob Holmes to fire a point-blank pass to you if you're open. You got to get to give him an angle that he can pass you the ball. Reichardt makes the back end. We're tied at 75 here. A little over two minutes played in the final period. A cliffhanger looming. Live and exclusive on Fox Sports. It's Burgess. Hasn't scored since halftime. Goes to Darnell Mee. Now it's Budnikov penetrating, kicking to Graveau, firing from deep. That rattles around the rim and tumbles for Aaron Graveau. It's a triple, and he has hit three of them in this match. He has not done one thing that he is not capable of. When he's open, he takes the three. When they close out on him, he puts it on the floor under control and finds a teammate or finishes. Ma to Foreman for the answering triple. Knocks it down. Bingo. He's talking about Jacob Holmes stepping up. The supporting cast for Adelaide need to knock down shots like that. Oscar Foreman did it early in the game in the second quarter. And now he's stepping up as well in the very important part of the game here in the second half. Single numbers on the shot clock as Burgess gets it. Working against Reichardt. Now the shot clock down to three. Darnell fires with a foot on the line. Is off the money. The tip in from Burgess from close range. Needed to do better. Ma has Farley, Foreman and Holmes joining in. It's Jacob Holmes hard to the hoop. And he's rewarded. Drawing a foul on Gary Budnikov. Adelaide will get more free throws. Gary Budnikov just had that left hand on the arm. I thought if, if he could have avoided that, he did a great job of retreating back and not making a whole lot of contact, which has had those hands on in the end. Jacob Holmes has been good from the stripe this year. 83%, top 10 in the league. Played on the championship team in 2002 here with Adelaide. His first season, he and Oscar Foreman coming in as rookies and winning a championship. And he has continued to blossom since then. 
And we should see him named in the Australian team tomorrow for the Commonwealth Games. Adelaide with a two-point lead, eight and a half remaining. Well, him and Foreman have stepped up here in the fourth. Daniel Mee to Grabeau, another man who stepped up. Burgess from long range, couldn't finish it. And there's Holmes and Foreman wrestling for the rebound between them. Two young guns as Ma looks to take on Grabeau. Now he needs help. Foreman provides it. He's in trouble. Lost the handle, goes to Rijkaard. Shot clock down to single numbers now as Rijkaard works on Burgess and Grabeau. Needs help, finds Ma. Four on the shot clock. The captain fires over a hand and knocks it down. A tough play, but he's made them all his life. Man. Woo. I tell you what, Farley's playing well. Mars playing well. Supporting cast is playing well. We got ourselves a four-point game. Grabeau, he's playing well. Takes on Brett Ma. It rattles around the rim for Aaron Grabeau. He adds the two. And Grabeau now has a season high of 17. What a time to produce it. Exactly. Ma thought he was fouled by Daniel Mee. Referees didn't see it that way as Jacob Holmes dances into the paint with some happy feet. Fans don't like the call. I thought he may have traveled. That was my initial reaction. No one seems to agree. I, th I thought for sure it was a block. I thought the whistle blew when the contact occurred, and then that's when he took the steps afterwards. That was a, 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 a peculiar play. Now, if they're saying it wasn't a lot of contact and then he walked, then that pretty much would sum up why he called that. But I thought the whistle was too quick for it to be a travel. I thought it occurred when the contact happened. Out. The way we defend them, great job on that last one. Mal's got Rijkaard. If he starts to go to work down here, we've got to come to help. But we've got to dig in. You know, we've got to make sure that bottom top eye here are set. All right, so if he's going to wear it here, if this guy goes to boards, we've got it. I want to go to Darnell in the block here and the next couple of times in 53. All right, so, hey, if it doesn't work, if he swings back out of it, then we've got one of you two guys down low, and go. let's play. Right? Let's go to work. Let's go. Let's go. Well, the Taipans and Adelaide locked in a thriller here at the moment. Adelaide leading by two, but it's been a seesawing affair, and it's reflected by our percentage of leading the match. It's around 48% for Adelaide, 45 for Cairns. And of course, it's been tied for almost 10% of the game. And the Taipans down by two. Shot clock works to 10 as Daniel Mee works the baseline in a confined space. Somehow, he made it happen. Just his second field goal of the game. It was worth waiting for. Kansas scored the last four and tied it away with less than seven minutes remaining. Here's Brett Maher dishing to Nash, and from close range, Nash adds the two. Heavyweight boxers toe-to-toe -to -toe is what we're seeing here between Adelaide and Cairns. Shot clock again down to single numbers now as Budnikov. Beats Darnell Mee, isolated against the shorter Brett Ma. Now Catalini must fire with two on the shot clock. Couldn't finish it. Jacob Holmes with the rebound for Adelaide. Number nine for him in that category where he leads the game. Nash. Looks for some options. Reichardt is there. Now Adelaide has single numbers on the shot clock. It's Farley versus Darnell Mee. Found a way to fire an opening, and Willie Farley's enjoying it at the moment. He has 18. Only Reichardt with 23 has more for Adelaide. Another tough shot. Big play. Got a number of players who want the rock in this situation. Catalini. He fires. Looks good. Couldn't finish it off, though, and Mark Nash grabs the rebound. 40 rebounds for Adelaide, 30 for the Taipans in the match as Jacob Holmes gets it from Rijkaard. Against Catalini, playing with three fouls. Holmes fires unsuccessfully. Melvin Thomas somehow kept it alive. The fans thought he travelled right in front of Scott Butler, but he didn't see it that way. 
Here's Daniel Mee for the triple. The championship winner with Adelaide knocks down a three, and they are back to within one. Well, according to the fans here, that is a big swing. And now Willie Farley against a double team, drawing a foul on Melvin Thomas. That's the fourth on the Cairns tie fans in this period. Adelaide are yet to commit a foul since three-quarter time. And we'll get another look at it. Melvin Thomas, let's watch the feet. No, good no call. Good no call. He didn't turn over, didn't move his feet, didn't slide. Excellent gutsy call by the referee not to call that. And that's why Scott Butler's the reigning referee of the year. Less than five to play. Adelaide by a point having defeated Cairns by a point at their venue, or two there and one here. Farley from long range, knocks down the two. The cream is rising to the top here. Budnikov for Crosswell, working the baseline. And now Oakley to Darnell Mee again. The shot clock works the single numbers for the Taipans. Farley called for the foul. It's his second and the first on Adelaide in this period. Play between Scott Butler and Phil Smythe. Melvin Thomas and Farley getting together. And a foul will be called on Melvin Thomas here. He just took it a little too far right in front of the referee. Melvin threw a punch. Here it is in replay. Fouls, in fact, going to be called on Mark Nash, I believe. And Melvin Thomas I, did throw a punch at Nick Hambor in the match played in Cairns just two weeks ago and picked up an unsportsmanlike foul. And he was a little angry there against Willie Farley as well. Well, what a climax this is proving to be. And Reichardt called for a soft foul. That's the third on Adelaide now. Okay. <laughs> I just realized you're leaving me gaps and I'm not saying anything. It's such a good game just sitting here watching. Well, the Taipans desperate for a score here. They trail by three. A little over four minutes left. Grabo gets it back from Burgess. Looks for the penetration. Oakley has Darnell Me in the corner. Working in Nash. Pass Brent Ma. Darnell Me adds another two. He has nine in the game. Seven of them have arrived here in this final period. Back to a one point spread. Ma. Against Darnell Me. Looks to penetrate. Kicks to Rykart. Oakley got another piece of it. A big block again from Kane Oakley, the third in the match, and Cairns with an opportunity to retake the lead here as Darnell Mee kicks to Burgess from long range. He knocks down the shot. The Taipans are back in front. Woo! My goodness. Such a high rate. Both teams doing well to execute knockdown shots here in the clutch. Marr drives. Pull up, fade away. That's short. He's fouled in the process, and Brett Maher will go to the free throw line. And in fact, that's the fifth team foul on Cairns in this period. So now they have foul worries. And Brett Maher, the best free throw shooter in the country, will go to the strike. That is, even in slow motion replay, that is so hard to see when a defender gets the shooter's elbow and it throws your shot off so much. And it the officials do a great job of detecting that. Oh my, oh my, oh my. Well, that's how tight it has been. Adelaide by four at quarter time and half time. Cairns by one as we go into the last period. And we are tied at 89. Cairns have played one overtime game this year. And Adelaide come up with the ball. Darnell B and Martin Catalini come up with the error. Just the sixth turnover for them in the game. What a time to produce it. 
Well, the fans have been riding this one. We trust you are enjoying it. Live and exclusive on Fox Sports as Willie Farley knocks down the three and says, I'm the man. Let's see if Cairns can ba bounce back from that mental error. It's not El Me, it's a Grimaud. Burgess. There's some anxious players out there now, and Darnell Me, a former Adelaide Championship winner, goes to work again, and off the window, he adds two, and he's got some jaw jacking for Willie Farley as well. He's one of the guys that'll put you on his back. He wanted the rock. He hasn't had big numbers all night. He didn't look like missing that bank shot. Brett Ma with a shot clock at single numbers against Catalini, another former teammate. Ma penetrates, couldn't finish it off, and now the Taipans with an opportunity to retake the lead. Catalini to Graveau, posting up Nash. Catalini gets it back. Quick hands from Nash. He's called for the foul. The fans don't like it, but Damien Tice marches in and will send the Taipans to the free throw line. He said he got him up on the arm. Good, strong move. He got a lot of ball. Two. Two. Well, Mark Nash has done an outstanding job all night. And that is a heartbreaker. And Catalini, who spent seven years here in Adelaide and won two championships with them, has put Cairns back in front with a little over two minutes to play. You know, you don't make much fuss over the fact that those are two big pressure free throws, and he knocked them down, no sweat. Brett Ma looking for the penetration, goes to work off the window, and the captain answers the call. Does he want the ball on that end? Darnell Me wanted it on the other end. Everybody's making great plays. Fans make their presence felt. Here's Darnell Me, who's carrying cans at the moment. And now at the top of the key is Burgess. Long rebound spills to Budnikov. Cairns with another opportunity. Fresh shot clock for them. Darnell Me has nine points in this term as Crosswell penetrates. Pass for Budnikov. Has some problems with it. And an over and back violation is called. And the fans are loving it. The ball was tipped by Adelaide, but then Budnikov put a hand on it before it went over. Oh, my goodness. Two big men. Watch Budnikov touches it and then doesn't make any effort to try and get it before half court. Another big mental error for Cairns. Oh, what a finish. Live and exclusive here on Fox Sports. 81 seconds to play. A spot in the semifinals up for grabs. The loser goes home extremely disappointed. It is 94-93. When these teams played at this venue back on the 1st of October, it was 109-108 Adelaide. Brett Maher has been hitting game winners all season. Let's listen in with the Adelaide Huddle and Phil Smythe. Offensively, we want to be 44 right now, or we can be our 42. Will's running hot, so if the clock's winding down, Get the ball into his hands. Then I'd like to see you, if there's plenty of time, just slide over and go two-man game. Or will you do them on your own? Okay. So we grab an offensive board. If it's a miss, that'd be great. Defensively, doing a great job of getting our bodies in the way now. Lots of talk on deck. You've got to switch the screen. Front the rollers. Okay. Here we go. Go. I just want to say, Case, that when you said that one of these teams is going to go away disappointed, it's just like that. Both of them have played great basketball all night. A couple of mental errors there by Cairns, but it's, it's still a one-point game. And Bill Smythe must instill so much confidence in his player, casually telling Willie Farley, you can do it. Take them yourself if you need to. Holmes. Goes to Brett Ma, who's not a bad option either. Guarded by Darnell Me, he finds an opening, fires unsuccessfully. Burgess grabs the rebound. Ty Pants get it back with a chance to retake the lead inside the last minute. Cairns dodge a bullet there. Brett Maher had a wide open look. Four consecutive nights of sudden death on Fox Sports, and this has been the best. Grabo having a career night to Budnikov, who's foul taking the three. Surely. No whistle from Damian Tice. Cairns get it back again. 
tight bench down by one. Darnell Mee fires and puts them back in front. Oh, what a play from Darnell Mee. And the Cairns Taipans lead by a point. The shot clock is seven seconds inside the game clock. Adelaide must score. Cairns should get another opportunity. Farley's the man against Grabo. Shot clock works to single numbers. Farley, no room for the shot. Now Brett Ma in traffic needs help. Rijkaard, tough shot from Rijkaard as well. Short, the Taipans have got it. They can seal it here. The Taipans by a point. Rijkaard fouls. Darnell Mee will go to the free throw line. Four seconds to play. Cairns by a point. There's been nine lead changes here in this quarter. And Adelaide will still get a play, you would expect. Even if Darnell Mee can take both these free throws, that will give Adelaide a chance on the buzzer with a long-range three to tie it away. A lot of time to get a good three-point shot off. He needs to make them both. Now a three-point shot can win it. Defensive player of the year, Darnell Mee, has put the tie fans two in front. Less than five seconds to play. Brett Ma to Foreman, who's open. He goes to work against Melbourne. Thomas, they're going to OT on the buzzer. Oscar Foreman drops two on the Cairns tie fans, and we need another five minutes. And the fans are going crazy. That's playoff experience, baby. Brett Maher knows he got a lot of time. He had 4.8 seconds on the shot or on the game clock. Kicked it up early. Oscar Foreman with a good pump fake. Knew exactly how much time he had. Knocked it down. Great play under some pressure situations. Look at this. I'm sorry, didn't pump fake. Just went up nice and strong. Melvin Thomas did a good job of putting heat on him but not creating a foul to make a three-point play to lose the game. They still have another crack in overtime. Adelaide has won their last four games in OT. They will be feeling confident here in front of their home fans. The Taipans have lost two of their last three, including against the Melbourne Tigers back in January. This is the second overtime game in Adelaide today. The Adelaide fellas in the WNBL were beaten by the Canberra team in OT. Now the 36ers are there as well. Simply again, okay? You can look at the thumb, you can look at the fist now, then, but right now, 44 and 42 is working real well for us as long as we're moving the ball, all right? Can't be just passy pass, you know? Need to do it with a purpose and we're okay. Defensively, if we can get a charge, we'll win the game. All right, we're doing a good job getting there. Nearly there, nearly there. Step up, take a charge, we've got the game, okay? Offensively, we're looking to spread them out, then move the ball. Penetrating pass inside is good. We're still looking to run them, though. First thing we said at half time, push the ball. Not there, then we pull. Early pass is on, let it go, then we pull it out. Okay, here we go, guys. Let's go, let's go. Let's go. Well, this game has looked like either team could have won different stages of the last 30 seconds. Great defense by Cairns to make the 36ers take a poor shot. And then Darnell, Darnell Mee was able to hit the shot, but he wasn't able to finish the game off with those free throws. But, you know, still the game wasn't over if he hit him. Could have knocked down a three-point shot. Hands with the possession arrow as we get underway in OT. Live and exclusive on Fox Sports. Trust you are enjoying our coverage. A semi-final spot on the line. As Darnell Mee has five on the shot clock, guarded by Farley, goes to work. Tough one, but Darnell Mee's unbelievable at the moment. Has scored 14 of his 16 points since three-quarter time. Brett Ma takes on Darnell Mee. Thought he was fouled, couldn't finish it off, and can't come up with the loose ball. And Don Malongo, and the 
fans let Darnell know all about it. Adelaide catch a break. And just a good play. Just surprises Darnell me. Right there, he goes to make a move, just loses the handle. And I'm sure everyone in Cairns watching the game and all the fans that have come here, they can let him slide on that one because he's the reason they're here. All their fans up at the casino in Cairns, no doubt on the edge of their seats at the moment. Nash keeps it alive for Adelaide. Now it's Farley against Grabeau reaching in. Foreman back to Brett Ma. Wanting a screen from Nash, now finds an opening. Brett Ma from long range couldn't finish. Burgess over the top grabs the rebound for the Taipans. Adelaide, none of three here in OT. Hands one of one so far. Catalini against Jacob Holmes, elevating, couldn't finish it. Brett Ma grabs the rebound. Now Willie Farley. Against Grabeau. Finds a way past him, confronted by Catalini. Now Jacob Holmes has Catalini to contend with. Works the baseline. Excellent D from Burgess. Knocks down the pass. And the Taipans will get it back. Inside Burgess from close range. Worried out of the points. And Brett Ma picks off the pass as well. Excellent D from both teams at the moment. Foreman goes hard to work. Soft touch eludes him. Nash for the tap-in. Throws it away. A slack of rebounding instincts for Cairns. I guess maybe they thought that shot was going down. They got to think that everything's going to miss. Rabot with single numbers on the shot clock. Looks for Catalini working on Jacob Holmes, double team. Now Grabeau from long range, knocks down another three. Grabeau has hit four threes in this match, and Aaron Grabeau has done an excellent job. A career-high threes in a match for Grabeau, and it's the Taipans by three as Jacob Holmes is fouled with 2.14 to play. And speaking of Grabeau, Case, not to mention that he has done a wonderful job on Willie Farley, who is red hot, and he has made every shot tough for him as we check out the quarter by quarter and the OT, which is usually blank. Cairns won only one quarter before we went to OT. Value for money here. Jacob Holmes, as he has done all year, top 10 in the league from the foul line, calmly ices the two. The prize at stake, a clash against the Sydney Kings in a best of three semi-final beginning next Wednesday. Catalini against Riker. Now Budnikov. Shot clock to 10 for the Taipans. Crosswell was open in the paint, they couldn't find him. Darnell Mee to Catalini, who elevates against Dusty Reichard, and Catalini comes to the party. Again, Cairns lead by three. Foreman. Against Budnikov, needs help. Reichardt gives him some support. Off the window, Dusty Reichardt makes a tough shot tumble. He has 25 to lead all scorers. Both teams getting it done, knocking down shots in pressure situations. Burgess against Riker. Single numbers on the shot clock as he spins baseline, couldn't finish it. Brett Maher with the rebound. 80 seconds to play, and Brett Maher with Adelaide in possession, down by one. Farley, skip pass for the captain, working on Crosswell, kicking to Nash. He finds Ma in the corner, Foreman, for the long-range three. A little deep with it, and good work from Burgess to grab the rebound for Cairns. Oh, man. I, just, I can just feel that one going down. Dane Cairns are patient. Shot block of single numbers. Darnell Mee against Willie Farley. It's been a tremendous battle all night. The fall away is off the money. Nash gets it to Brett Ma. Adelaide with a chance to retake the lead. Farley has me on the retreat, reaching in. Oh, Daniel my Mee. goodness. Call for the foul. 
Ooh, that was clean. I can see that from here. I don't even have to see the replay. Oh, my goodness. Right in front of the Cans bench, too. Uh, let's have a look. He goes to crossover. He reads it. That's clean. That is clean. Woo! Willie Farley to the free throw line. He is five of six from the stripe so far tonight. He was top 10 in the league at 84% in the regular season. <laughs> Man, drama. Farley couldn't finish it. We are tied at 103. Shot clock is going to be five seconds inside the game clock and timeout is called with 26 seconds to play. It is 103 apiece. And 21 on the shot clock. So five second difference between the shot clock and the game clock, which is enough time, more than enough time for Adelaide to come down and get a good shot if they take the shot clock all the way down. Well, this has been a terrific contest. The NBL's Phillips Championship at its best. We got the ball at halfway. Right? Um, Darnell, you're taking it halfway. We got it halfway. All right, so, Buzzy, I want you going to the rim, and we want Cat, you coming out. Me, you're our first target. Gary, you're our second target. Let's keep it going this way. Very much. Right? You're still there, you're back, right? Once we get it in, I want to get the ball back to you. And we're running fish Well, these teams have executed so well throughout the match, but now is the acid test. Twenty-six seconds to play. One oh three apiece. I like what Cans are doing. They're getting the basketball. Darnell Mead inbound the basketball. Nathan Crosswell be doing the handle, and he's tough to keep out of the lane. Darnell Mead restarts to Catalini and gets it back. Guarded by Willie Farley. They've been at it all night in a high-quality battle. And Darnell milking the clock. Single numbers on the shot clock now as he looks to get busy. Pass Farley, kicks to Crosswell against Brent Ma. Fans thought it was a charging foul, couldn't get a whistle. Budnikov on the buzzer, can't finish it. Willie Farley knocks it out of court. Cairns will get it back with four seconds to play. Case, good no call. Make these guys win the game. The ball hit the ring. Good no call. Make these guys win the game. There wasn't a whole lot of contact. Mar with the flop. That would have brought back nightmares for the Melbourne Tigers, but that's another story. Four seconds to play. Cairns with an opportunity, but Willie Farley knocks it out of court. The Taipans are looking for a hero. They have never been to the semi-finals in seven years. Anthony Stewart gets the job done! Anthony Stewart, the co-captain, nails it on the buzzer, and the Cairns Taipans are going to the semi-finals for the first time in NBL history. What an amazing finish. It is 106-103. And they are celebrating, and deservedly so, Anthony Stewart. Shooting the ball at 38% from the field. In the corner, comes up with the finish that has ended Adelaide season. And the Taipans are going to face the Sydney Kings for a spot in the big dance. Full time in Adelaide. The Taipans 106 have defeated Adelaide 103 here on Fox Sports. Ten points to seven in the extra period. And a long-range three from Anthony Stewart 
who is one of only five players in NBL history who has had more than a thousand threes. They brought him on with four seconds to play in overtime. Steve, what has he got to say? Well, Stewing, yeah, how's that? Is that the biggest shot of your career? Oh, uh, mate. <laughs> oh, I'm, oh, oh, what a place to play at this place. Uh, it was tough early. I had plenty of time to think about it on the bench, so it was a good shot. What, is, what about the quality of that game? I mean, it looked like Adelaide won it. You won it. So many lead changes. It was tied. It was just an amazing game to watch. Mate, they've had so many injuries in the last few weeks. We thought we could get them down the stretch, but geez, Farley, mate, he's tough, isn't he? He hit some huge shots. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable. Well, Brett Maher was great. Burgess came and played under those circumstances. Andrew Cloud and Darnell Mee was pretty awesome, too. He's, he's clutched down the, down the stretch. Uh, we've got some big-time players, and we're looking forward to Sydney next week, mate. We'll give them a shake. Well, you guys played Sydney tough. You lost to them by 10, but the game was closer than that. Then you went and got the win, so that's a team that you guys feel like you can get. Yeah, Jason Smith, and they didn't play that game, but... Uh, I think Roberts has really hurt them, get, uh, falling, falling out. But, mate, they're, they're a tough team. CJ Brewer, they've got all-stars. So we're going to be have to be on our game to win that one. All right, Stu, I'll let you go get ready for the semi-final. Be an Archie. Anthony Stewart, a championship winner with the Wildcats back in 1995. In game number 448 in the NBL, comes up with the biggest shot of his life. <laughs> This has been a Fox Sports presentation.